In the last few decades, and more like in the last 100 years or so, we've managed to develop quite a lot of different types of antenna, a lot of different types of detectors, and a lot of different ways for us to measure different types of frequencies around the universe in order to observe and learn how the universe works and how things around the universe seem to interact with one another. But when it comes to receiving and transmitting various types of frequencies, the idea of using an antenna to measure something that's much smaller on a scale of, let's just say, atoms or molecules, hasn't really been explored as much. And that's, of course, until now. It looks like, for the first time ever, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below managed to create a micro-antenna, actually an antenna whose purpose is to measure the activity of proteins and an antenna that seems to be made out of DNA. And that's technically something that's never really been done before, and in some sense is absolutely brilliant. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. So let's talk a little bit more about this study, what exactly this means for the future of science, and talk a little bit more about how this antenna works as well. First of all, as you probably know by now, most antenna work on a relatively similar principle. They generally are created in such a way that they basically absorb a very certain frequency of, for example, radio light, with certain shapes and certain sizes of antenna being much better at picking up certain types of frequencies, with radio antenna generally following the same principle and the same general design. But that's of course for radio waves. Obviously, you can kind of make this smaller and create something that can then start receiving much shorter wavelengths, including, of course, things that can be visible to us in, for example, ultraviolet light, possibly infrared light, and possibly even optical light. And so, in theory, if you wanted to take a look at the microscopic world, which generally operates in nanometers, and specifically here we're talking about something that's maybe 100 to a few hundred nanometers in size, all of this could technically become possible if we could create an antenna that's essentially a few hundred nanometers across that's able to function in optical light. In this case, receiving and reflecting different types of optical light and thus showing us how a lot of things inside, for example, a typical cell might work. And if such a technique or antenna could be created, it could open up the doors for one of the most unexplored fields in biology, the field sometimes referred to as the protein dynamics. The field that tries to understand and tries to study how the proteins reshape themselves, how they move around, how they bend, and how they interact with a lot of things around themselves, simply because a typical protein is actually extremely mobile and extremely dynamic with kinesin right here being a really good example. This is a protein that's essentially responsible for literally walking across one of the organelles inside our cells and often delivering a lot of different essential materials in or out of the cell. And so finding a way to learn more about protein dynamics is literally like trying to find a way to look at the universe and trying to invent a telescope. And it looks like the scientists have just gotten a little bit closer or possibly even a lot closer to being able to do all of this. They might have literally just invented a telescope for proteins, for internal activity of the cell. And in this case, the antenna itself is made entirely out of DNA. Or actually, that's one of the main advantages here, because DNA is relatively easy to create, with the DNA chemistry itself being very well understood, being quite easily programmable, and generally also being very easily modifiable or changeable at any point. And because of this, the scientists refer to this as a fluorescent DNA nanoantenna. And fluorescent because it also receives and then re-emits light at different frequencies, depending of course on what it detects and depending on what it studies. And that's actually the main principle of how this antenna works. Here the scientists start by creating a tiny DNA structure that contains some sort of fluorescent molecule that emits a certain type of light that's visible in a very specific frequency. And this DNA molecule then starts physically interacting with one of the proteins that the scientists are trying to study. The thing is, once it starts interacting with the protein physically, it also starts to change the way that it emits the light, which changes all of the emissions coming from this antenna or from the bioluminescent dye. And depending on what the protein is doing and how it's reshaping itself, the antenna starts sending very specific signals or essentially very specific frequencies of light. But once again, because this is a fluorescent antenna, it also needs to receive some of the light in order to then receive it back. 
And so in that sense, it's no different from a typical radar, for example. It sends a signal and then it receives some of the signals back. But in this case, what we're detecting is, of course, the change in the color or the change in fluorescence. With different types of shapes of antenna producing different types of colors and, of course, different changes in fluorescence as well. And the main purpose of this is to basically observe the structural changes in these proteins in order to understand how they work a little bit better. And because other techniques, such as for example using x-rays, can generally be a lot more disruptive or even destructive to these proteins, using typical fluorescent light is definitely preferable in order to observe these uh, proteins in their natural environment. And because it's actually relatively easy for the scientists to produce various DNA molecules in order to produce various types and shapes of antenna, this particular technique is surprisingly easy to execute and could potentially lead to some major advances in biology in the next few years. More importantly, this technique is also extremely sensitive and is able to capture some of the most short-lived activities of proteins that's been previously impossible to observe. With some of the examples from this paper, specifically identifying motion of different types of proteins that's never really been seen before, mostly because it's just way too fast. And since they've already tested this with several proteins, it seems to work pretty well and might actually create a completely new technique to observe a lot of different structures inside the cell and potentially lead to a completely new revolution in molecular biology, kind of similar to how we had a major revolution in space sciences because of a lot of new telescopes created in the last few decades. And because of the general simplicity of the technique, the scientists here suggest that any lab in the world that possesses what's known as the spectra fluorometer that you kind of see right here, the apparatus responsible for measuring various types of frequencies coming from various types of fluorescence inside tiny samples, could in theory employ this technique with all of this costing almost nothing. With the scientists behind the study from my hometown of Montreal now wanting to create some kind of a biological startup in order to produce these DNA-based nano antenna and then send them to various labs around the world with all of this potentially costing almost nothing. And the thing is, when it comes to DNA packaging and DNA production, it's already possible to do this completely by yourself or by basically employing a lot of various uh, startups around the planet. As a matter of fact, there are quite a lot of videos on YouTube where they even teach you how to potentially create your own um, modifiable molecules. The whole idea of biohacking, as a matter of fact, is sort of based on this. But for now at least, I guess it's a really important first step. They've discovered this new technique, it seems to work, and now the next step is to make this scalable and make this something that a lot of labs around the world can start using for various types of research. Although I guess just the idea that this is an antenna made out of DNA and it's also a fluorescent antenna that's able to receive and emit light definitely makes this one of the coolest biological discoveries in the last few years. But once the scientists create something else from this, or once the scientists discover something else using this technique, or better even create something else out of DNA, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.